On our side in QuickBooks, I'm just gonna do the same thing we did last time, which is basically just enter it as a, a cash type of transaction whenever we make a purchase, which might happen through the bank of feed, bank feeds, but that would basically create an expense form. So we'll do the same thing. I'll just say like vendor one, and this happened on 05 or 04, 01 to, let's say two, four. And we're going to say it's going to go to cost of goods sold. And I'm just going to write in here that it was for the amount of $40, $40, same thing, $40. And actually it's not going to cost a good sold this time. However, it's going to go into the inventory account. So now we're going to put all of our purchases in inventory and reduce the inventory periodically. So I'm going to say this is going to be inventory, not cost of goods sold inventory. And there we have it. So this is going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going into inventory. Let's save it and close it. Go to my forms and check it out. We're going to say run it. So now we decreased inventory and the other side is going to, I'm sorry, we decreased the checking account and the other side is going into inventory assets. Nothing is happening over on the income statement we're doing more of the accrual component here but we don't have the supporting documentation in quickbooks the way we would if we were doing a perpetual inventory system because that supporting information is over here in our excel worksheet okay so then let's imagine time is passing sales are happening but as the sales happen i'm i'm not i'm not uh, recording an adjustment as the sales happen. That would be a period, a perpetual inventory system, but rather we're just going to adjust this at the end of the month. So, so sales are happening. I'm looking at my information in my Shopify, which is going up when I make the purchases because I'm adding the units to reflect the units when I make the purchases and then Shopify in essence would be decreasing them when we sell them on a perpetual inventory system basis for units but not for the dollar amount right they're not tracking the dollar amount on a first in first out generally they're just going but they will give us a track of the inventory in essence right because we're increasing the inventory when we purchase it and then they're going to automatically decrease it when you know the sales happen so we're going to keep on making our adjustments to try to satisfy what we think needs to be sold within the month to meet the sales needs. So let's imagine then that we're making another purchase on during the month of 4, uh, 415 April. We're gonna say on 415, we purchased another one of these and it's gonna be once again, product one, product one and we purchased one unit it's always going to be i'm going to put it on these books one at a time but this time it costs 22 dollars. that's where the issue comes in in kind of our first in first out system and we're going to imagine that we purchased on 415 uh two units of product two product two so now i've got product two in the same area here and i'm going to say that we purchased and i'm going to put them on the books one at a time right one unit at a time even though i purchased two of them and we're going to say that product two costs uh 105 dollars. we said and then i'm going to copy that and put that here so we've got two of these items that were purchased at 105 so we we're going to spend 210 for product number two and then we're also going to say that we had product number three on 415 and we're going to say that we purchased how many of those four of product number three and so i'm just going to call it product three but i'm going to put them on the books one at a time and they cost 650 currently so i'm going to copy that down copy to four more cells so that we have four of these put on the books one at a time at a unit cost of 650 if i add the four units that comes up to the uh 2600 so hopefully i got that all correct here so that means everything that we purchased on 415 if we purchased it from the same vendor even though we purchased these three different products 
would add up because these are all the unit costs one at a time to that uh, 2832, 2832. Uh, so let's imagine we purchase that from the same vendor and we're just gonna say, all right, let's stock up on that. And I could just imagine that goes through my bank feeds and I'm gonna say, let's make an expense form and we'll say it's for vendor one again, let's say. And this happens on 0415 to four. And we're just gonna put it into inventory instead of cost of goods sold. But other than that, it's much the same process we did last time within the current month because we're purchasing as we need it. And I'm just gonna put the lump sum that once again came to 2832. So we'll say, all right, 2832. And so this is gonna increase inventory, decrease the checking account. So let's say, all right, save it and close it. And over here, balance sheet checking account goes down, inventory goes up, nothing is happening over here to the, to the cost of goods sold, even though sales have been happening during the month of April. And on the sales side, the sales would be pulled in using the, other, using the method we talked about in prior presentations because we decoupled the sales half of the transaction from the cost and inventory half and, and the related cost of goods sold will be updated periodically at the end of the month after we do our physical kind of count at the end of the month. And then in Shopify, we, we saw the inventory going down in terms of units and we're gonna update the inventory for each of the units within our online store so that it can keep tracking on just a physical unit basis even though it's not generally tracking in terms of a cash flow assumption such as first in first out okay so that's what we have thus far so if i if i go back on over here this is what we have now i'm going to add a little bit of formatting over here i'm going to actually put this into a table so we can start to filter this and i feel a little bit safer putting it into a table because then the filters are kind of more static in other words you could select this whole thing and go to your data tab and add filters up top but I kind of feel better when it's in a table format. So I'm going to select the whole thing, even though I have a lot of empty cells over here. And then I'm going to go to the insert and I'm going to make a table out of it. This is going to adjust the formatting a little bit, but I'm going to say, okay, table. And what it does is it, it flattened out my, 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 uh, headings again. So I'm going to select the headings or let's select the whole thing up top and I'll squish this back down again. So it fits on a page. This one maybe can be a little bit longer. And so now we've just got the same thing, but in a table, a table structure. Okay, so then we'll add some more components to the table later. But right now, I just want to point out that we can, we can sort by the product. So if I go to my product over here and I could sort by say product number one and say, okay. And so now I've got the, uh, units each of these units what three of them in product number one i can count you know the number of products that we have on here even though they're on there and they were purchased for different dollar amounts so let's say it's the end of the month now and we're trying to figure out our our periodic adjustment monthly which will decrease inventory for the amounts that were sold and the other side's going to go to cost of goods sold for the cost of the goods are sold one way we might do that is within like Shopify, we might be saying, I believe these numbers are tying out to the, to the physical units of inventory. In other words, we've been increasing them when we purchase, we've been uh, decreasing them or, or the software has on a perpetual basis when the sales happened, we could tie these into a physical count, for example, to determine the physical number of inventories that we have as of let's say the end of the month this, these don't tie out to what our numbers will be but that's the kind of concept so we could say okay i know what the ending uh units of inventory are so if i go back on over here let's imagine that the ending units for product one are zero we sold all of the units out all three of these have been sold we have no units as of 